choose to live a flourishing life. And the way that I describe that is live at the intersection or the collision of what are you passionate about? What are you good at doing? What are you skilled at doing, gifted at doing? What, um, how do you contribute value? And what is your calling? And, and, and figure those out and make the decision sooner than later to live at the intersection of those. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Championship Leadership Podcast. We got Matt Lesser here uh, just outside of uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, thanks for being here, Matt. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nate. Really uh, looking forward to being on your show and being with you today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we can hop right into it. Championship Leadership is the name of the podcast. What comes to mind for you? What What does that mean to you when you hear Championship Leadership? Oh man. Well, your show's only what half hour. So, uh, let's, try. Uh, let's <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I've, I've spent, uh, most of my life, my, I shouldn't say my life, my adult life, my career, uh, working in leadership, either building teams or working with teams. And so leadership is near and dear to my heart. Um, and I, have been a part of organizations, uh, both on the inside and also, um, on the consulting side, seeing what good leadership can build and then seeing what, um, I use the word toxic, toxic leadership, yeah. what that, yeah. what that can do to organizations uh, and to the people within it. And so, um, so it's something I'm very passionate about and something that uh, I just wrote. Um, uh, actually, I wrote a book last year, just finished a book this year on, on the topic of focused on how do you build healthy organizations and helping leaders do that um, and equipping them with some practical tools to do that as well. Yeah, we sh shared the name of your book last year and this year. Yeah, sure. Um, last year came out in October. It's called Unsatisfied uh, When Less Is More. And uh, that book came out of um, about uh, 12 to 15 years of, of traveling literally around the world, working with teams, working with leaders, and and just seeing the um, the, the various impacts that uh, that leadership can have. And when yeah. leaders are are content and when they know who they are, they know their why and they know their purpose, um, it's a different leadership experience in organizations than leaders who are really struggling and wrestling with, this is it. This is, I, you know, yeah. I did all of this. I sacrificed all of that. Usually it means family and yeah. set marriages, whatever it could right. be. Yeah. Um, and those organizations are, they just struggle. And so, yeah. so I saw this over and over and over again. And um, it just got to the point that um, literally I had to write about it. I didn't actually want to write about it. In yeah. fact, I can't tell you how many times I prayed. I don't want to do this, but yeah, sure. um, couldn't get away from it. So the sec second book, the second book, uh, I just finished the manuscript. So it's not titled yet. Um, I'm thinking about um, unengaged uh, okay. building flourishing organizations. So that's kind of a working title, but I don't know if yeah. that's where it's going to end up or not. Um, and this one really is a, a field manual for leaders and for leadership teams to, to build, if you're serious about building an organization of flourishing team members that build a flourishing organization, that's what this book really focuses on doing. And so uh, really excited about the second one. I was about the first one too, but yeah, you know, authors don't tend to like their first work and yeah. Um, no, but uh, that. yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Wonderful. Yeah. I love it. What the first, the first, uh, book you said uh, when less is more what uh, you know I, I I think I definitely agree with you there and uh, but yeah talk about how maybe that came to, to be do you see a lot of the opposite <laughs> where people <laughs> feel like more is yeah. is more <laughs> unfortunately and you know yeah. as, as as you just referenced um, what I have personally experienced and what I've talked with uh, hundreds of leaders as I uh, prepared to write this book and really more is just more right? Yeah. It's not, it's not more, uh, more yeah. is more is often less. And yeah. so, um, you know, it, it really, it comes out of a, a passion for me now, um, after living some of that, you know, and getting caught up into the, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta climb the ladder. I gotta have the bigger title. I gotta have the bigger paycheck. I gotta have more of this, the bigger house, the bigger, more cars, more, whatever. Um, thinking that that's going to bring some satisfaction to me in life. And it does for a fleeting moment. And then literally it's like, what? That's it. Yeah, right. Um, and I use example after example in the book of people, you know, and I came across one um, after the book was already published, unfortunately, but um, even uh, Tom Brady, when he won his first Super Bowl, maybe it was yeah. second or third, I can't remember. And uh, literally said, 
okay, that was nice for the moment. Yeah, right. Um, and it, it's just, so really the heart of the book is finding your why, your deeper yeah. purpose and living out of your purpose and your passion and your calling in life um, and not just pursuing this endless pursuit of, I got to climb the highest mountain. I got to climb every ladder. I got to do this and get more and more and more because that leads to a very empty existence. Mm, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. What's that? Well, if you would, maybe I think it's a great time to kind of talk a little bit more about the path that, that got you here to where you are today and, you know, what exactly kind of is the, the mission for you and what you're up to today. Yeah, great. No, glad to. Great question. Um, so I started out my my career after after college, uh, went to business school. I was one of those weird kids that I knew exactly what I wanted to major in and uh, <laughs> I didn't change it. And uh, so I knew I wanted to study business. I knew I wanted two degrees in business and that's what I got. So um, finished college and uh, wound up being in a family business, which is something that um, I didn't think I would do, but uh, just the way that it worked out. Uh, a year and a half later, I went in and uh, to resign uh, because it just wasn't working out. <laughs> and, um, and rather than me resigning, uh, my dad actually left. And, uh, and so on the way out the door, um, signed the business over and it was, uh, over the next, um, three months, uh, I began to discover, uh, things that I, I was unaware of. And it was one of those experiences, Nate, where, um, uh, schooling just came natural to me. It's came easy to me. And so I thought that business would too. I mean, after all, it's yeah, what I studied, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was this arrogant, cocky, 20 <laughs> three 24 year old at the time and and uh thinking oh man i got the life by the by the cojones here and yeah. and uh wow within three months i i discovered um trade debt that uh wasn't paid um to the tune of about five years worth of net profit um yeah so there was um polluted property when the we were in the oil um industry we had wholesale and then we also had uh retail c stores at the time and uh, a couple of them were polluting properties that were neighboring. So uh, EPA doesn't like that. No, and, uh, <laughs> can't imagine. No, yeah. yeah. And the next one, this was a big one, uh, was that if you don't pay withholding tax for a period of time, um, the IRS will come after you, and what? they don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and they don't care what the story is, and they don't care no. who's running yeah. the show. You just want their money. Yeah. And, and I get that. I really do. I'm not, I'm yeah. not blaming the government. I mean, they're, they're owed their money. And so, right. um, so all this came collapsing in on me at the same time. And uh, so I spiraled into a very deep clinical and actually suicidal depression. And um, it was only after several months of literally feeling like I was, I, the way I describe it is I felt like it was in this dark pit with no way out. And yeah. I felt like all the walls were closing in on me. I felt all alone. You know, I had I had been married at the time for about a little over a year to my high school sweetheart, and um, she, um, you know, she knew that they were bad, but she didn't know how bad they were. And so, um, and it was after uh, a period of time where um, uh, just, literally just miracle after miracle began happening. And a local businessman, very very successful, wealthy, um, I was taken to see him because I was literally going to end my life. And uh, mm -hmm. my mom did actually. My mom took me to him. Oh, wow. And, um, I had hired my mom to come work for me and, uh, he's the one who then I, I was removed from the business for a period of time. I got help, um, medicated pretty heavily for a while, uh, just to restore some balance, mm -hmm. uh, learned a whole lot about brain chemistry and how that works in depression and being constantly overloaded and all that stuff. So, yeah. uh, I got a, I feel like I got a pretty good education on that. And so yeah. while I was gone, then, um, he sent a team of people in to see what we had. And, um, we had enough to start over. And so we started over about six months later and, uh, the business, uh, literally grew, it flourished. So it was me yeah. my mom and one other person who worked for our family for 35 years, um, combined me and my, my dad. And, uh, by the time we sold it, uh, 10 years later, it had grown about 15 X and, uh, we had, uh, there was two different organizations. We had entered to a joint venture, but, um, there was a, uh, you know, we had about 170 lives and, um, and it was it should, to the point that I had to decide, um, are we going to bet it all and go to the next level? Because we were at that point where we were kind of in a niche area, niche region, and our competitors didn't really, they kind of left us alone. Yeah. Uh, sure. but we, we had grown, we had expanded to the point that, um, we were no longer um, going to be left alone. 
And yeah, so okay. uh, had some had some decisions to make and uh, didn't want to take the risk. And my mom was battling cancer. And so just felt that it was better to, to sell. And mm -hmm. uh, and we did. Okay. So, um, so then from there, I went to private equity. I was in private equity for 12 years. That's where my passion for leadership really uh, was lit in me. It was lit while we were building the business. I mean, I had to learn a whole lot going for, from three employees, from three people to 170, man. I had to learn yeah, right. what leadership okay. was in the trenches. Yeah. They don't, they don't teach you that stuff in business school. No. And, yeah. <laughs> so, so learned a lot through that. And then, um, as I began to travel and, and meet with business owners, business leaders, and, and just seeing the different examples of, of leadership, um, uh, and began to, to teach and began to coach and began to train. Um, it just got to the point that, um, about, about 10 years in, uh, I had some people that worked for me. I had people that knew me and loved me. And basically they said, man, you need to just go out, go and do this on your own. Um, you know, you, you're, you're passionate about it. You're passionate about seeing leaders and leadership teams that get it. Yeah. And so, um, man, go on your own. So I guess Dave's one of those things that I, I heard it too many times. And so, uh, I did. And so I, I left private equity. I spent, uh, spent a year in banking and, uh, that was tough. Um, it wasn't yeah. for me. Banking is not for me. Yeah. And, uh, then I spent after that, I, uh, I spent uh, another year working with a friend of mine, uh, actually helping him build his executive team. And, uh, he, I was on his board actually. And so we okay. kept coaching him and saying, Hey, you need to, you need to grow and build an executive team. So then after that, uh, I had this really, I had this passion to write this book. So I did. And, uh, and now I'm really focused on, um, really getting in and, and client, you know, building clients and working with businesses, leaders and leadership teams. So sorry, went a little bit long on that one, but, um, I want no, to give you some perfect. context. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, on, along that journey, you know, being in the private equity world and and uh, really having the opportunity to see, you know, leadership teams. And I think you kind of talked about it in the answer in, in the first question, too, of seeing great leadership and you've seen, you know, the toxic, very poor they, it is which which one do you find most often? Is there a lot of great leadership out there or does it seem to be really lacking? Um, you know, it's, that's, uh, that's a, that's a really good question, Nate. Um, I have seen, I've seen both mm -hmm. and, um, I've worked with both and I've worked for both. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I would say that from my experience would be, it's, it's probably fairly split. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, you're asking for a, it's a fairly small sample size, right? I mean, sure. other, other leaders who may be listening to your, to your podcast may say, yeah, yeah I disagree with that. And I would fully have to embrace yeah. that. So, yeah. um, but I, at this point though, I, I really don't care uh, what the split is. What I really care about is, um, helping those good leaders get better and helping yeah, those toxic leaders, helping those toxic leaders, either um, become more self-aware so they can change, so they can grow, or, you know, they need to be, you know, it's going to sound maybe bad, but they need to be replaced if they're not going to be willing to grow yeah. because they're doing so much damage to people's lives. And I've seen it. I've had a front row seat for that too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The, the sense of the feeling that I have is like, I don't know. I We're in a time right now where we really need some strong leaders and yes. And it feels like more, more than in a long time. Right. And so I don't know if that's true or not. It's just kind of how it feels yeah. from the, I'm with you. So, yeah. What's uh, who are, who are some great leaders, coaches, mentors that you've had and, and always a little bit less on who they are, although, you know, share them if you want, but like really what's some of the characteristics that have stood out from those leaders that you've taken to kind of help mold who you are. As oh man. That's um, you know, honestly, Dane, I, and I've said this before, I, I think I even said it in my book. Um, I would not be sitting here today had it not been for the wonderful um, men and women who have invested in my life um, literally since I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, so my uh, I had a uh, there was a local attorney um, that he passed away, unfortunately, in 2006. Um, he should still be here. Man, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um, he was he was the this the wisest man I've ever met. And oh, wow. as a young snot nosed teenager, <laughs> he saw something in me and yeah. I don't know what it was, but, uh, he started meeting with me when I was 16 years old 
And, um, and we met all through college. We met um, when I started in the business world. Now we didn't, so we'd go, sometimes we go periods of time and not have much contact, but sure. we, we would meet. And, and then the last two years of his life, I had the wonderful opportunity to spend, um, I met with him once a week and uh, just, he just poured his life into me. And so that's one example. Um, he, he really helped me get through some tough times. Um, as a, uh, as a kid growing up, I had some uh, wonderful role models as teachers that, uh, that invested in me um, in the business world. When I went through my, my, uh, my depression and then came out of that, um, I had both a mentor and a counselor and I met with them weekly uh, for, uh, I met with them weekly for about five years. And um, there really, that was, I, I view that as my, um, uh, as my, uh, I guess, advanced degree education. I, I do have an MBA, but that's, that's, that's not neither here nor there. Yeah, what those yeah. guys did is they gave me the advanced education in life. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. What they really taught me was they taught me what it was to be a husband, um, a dad, um, a, a, a businessman, um, a leader, um, a, a friend, um, and, and really what it was to be a man in general. And I think that we live in a culture today. I think that that's maybe not popular to say, but I don't care. Right. Yeah. Um, we need to have, we need to have men who are willing to step up and lead. We need to have women that are willing to step up and lead. And so, um, and I'm not afraid to say that, you know, we need, we yeah. need solid leaders. So, right. And then, um, um, my, my, I had a, I had a pastor that for 29 years who was my pastor. And, uh, again, um, he was my pastor from the time I was 16 years old and, uh, until I was 45. And, uh, he just invested a lot of him in me and, uh, loved the guy dearly. He, he's retired now, but we still get together once a month. So, oh, that's great. Just, and, and I have a few other examples as well, but it's just those kinds of people, Nate, that, uh, for whatever reason, you know, cross paths and, um, either I wanted to learn from them or they saw something in me and, and, uh, and it's, so I encourage every person, man, woman, doesn't matter. I encourage you. If you see potential in someone and you're in a position where you can share, do it. Um, take yeah. some time, that, yeah. that little bit of time, that little bit of investment. Um, I mean, sometimes I was, you know, with the, with my attorney friend and sometimes it was once a year, but I'll never forget those times we had together and the, the return on that exponential. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I've, cause I've, I've benefited from those types of relationships too. Uh, you know, those are the ones that always come to mind, you know, that yeah. just really, I don't know, you, you don't know why you always kind of wondered maybe why or what they saw in, in, in you that, that made them, you know, take that uh, chance on you or whatever, and just really invest in, in you. And, and uh, I think, yeah, I agree. That's so important. Absolutely. Um, because oftentimes it is, it's the other, it's other people that can see it in us before we fully see it in ourselves, right. Or, or can get through some of those limiting beliefs that we all have. So yes. Um, beautiful. What's uh what's, what's the vision for you? I think, you know, championship leadership is all about having a great vision and, and also a courage to take action on it. So for you, you know, next five to 10 years and what you're looking to, to do and to build and, um, and the impact that you want to make, what, what's that vision for you? Um, well, the vision started, um, about a year and a half ago when I decided to leave corporate and go on my own. And, uh, and that was, that, that was not, uh, not easy. It was, uh, it's hard. And, uh, yeah. but I, I really felt passionate and I felt called to, to start something, um, that focused on building healthy, uh, flourishing leaders who build flourishing organizations. And so, so I want, I, uh, next five to 10 years, hopefully, um, I'd like to write two to three more books, maybe um, five mm -hmm. to six is what I'm thinking now. Yeah. Who knows? Might might be ten, might be three. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and just continue to, to build contacts, build clientele of of leaders and leadership teams that are really passionate about um, investing in. You know, it's very easy to say our most important asset are employees. There are very right. few organizations though that actually demonstrate that practically. Yeah. And yeah. that's who, uh, that's what I want to see changed. And that's what I want to influence and help is, okay, this, you say it is, then let's do it. And this is how you can do it practically if yeah. you're really serious about that. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. Very good. What's, um, well, let's, you know, maybe you've already, at this point, there's guests have probably typically shared a few of these moments, but 
um, you know, I'd like to talk about like some critical moments in your life where had you decided differently, you'd, you'd be in a very different place. Uh, Cause I think it's, you know, especially over the last few years, very, <clears throat> a lot of people find themselves in these moments right now. And I, you know, I think we can all relate. It's, it's tough to make a decision. You don't know which way to go. feels like, you know, the world is revolving around this decision and you just don't want to get it wrong. Right. But unfortunately, like you got to make the decision to figure out how it's going to roll out. Right. <laughs> because we yeah. want to know the answer before we make the decision. But I yeah. think there's power in hearing from others and how they decided in those moments that you maybe can lean on and learn from. So is there a moment or two for you that you could share uh, to the listener? Yeah, I think the uh, the first one I, I alluded to it is is uh, when I was going to leave the family business and and then I didn't, you know, yeah, that right. that that would have been a turning point because I at that point I really had no idea what to do other than I was going to go to grad school, um, but I have no idea where my life would have gone from there, and yeah. so that was that was one. Um, the second one is I think making the decision to sell the business, and you know, it's a decision yeah. that. It's uh, when I was making it, I mean, literally you talk about losing sleep and, and all that stuff, you know, you literally something you spent blood, sweat and tears building and, you know, right. get all these lives that you're responsible for. And, um, and so, you know, I, I honestly, I question to this day, if that was the best decision and sure. I, I don't have an answer for it. I really don't. Yeah. Um, and so, and I think probably the third one is um, making the decision to go on my own. Um, a year and a half ago, and then just yeah. um, you know, being basically, I, I use the example, of, you know, burning the ships, right? So yeah. a year and a half ago, I, I burned the ships, and so, um, so those on the professional side, it was those personal. I think marrying my wife, um, I don't yeah. know who I'd be today without her, <laughs> right? You know, she, I definitely married up, man. She's my better half, yeah. And and then uh, the decision to have kids, um, I didn't want to have kids when we first got married. Okay. And then we made the decision five years into our marriage to have kids. And uh, we have three, two boys and a girl. And um, my gosh, man, I, I can't imagine life uh, without them. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. I love it. Um, well, what's something that stood out for you? You know, you threw out a lot of examples, like if you can kind of remember back to that moment, like what, what was something maybe out of all of those that that stood out that really um has helped you in each of those uh decisions to to move whatever direction you decided um i think that wise counsel and yeah. um and i believe in that today you know it's when i started this business um i had some very wise counsel from yeah. a uh, an 82 year old gentleman and just love him to death no filter whatsoever and i love it <laughs> um, awesome. if it's yeah. up here it's out here you know it's, it's yeah. just the way it is but he said uh, he said don't do this alone and i said okay and i said i, I can't afford to hire anybody i'm startup here man yeah he said you don't have to pay anybody he says put together a personal board of directors and so we talked about that. And, and so I, I did, I asked my wife and I asked four guys to serve and they do, we meet quarterly. We spend a half a day together and Nate, I'll tell you what, they have been an unbelievable source of encouragement, of challenge, of uh, wisdom. You know, I can't tell you many times just in the last year and a half, you know, I've, I've been on that ledge and they'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. Let's back this train up. Yeah. Here. Sure. Um, and there's times where, um, you know, I'll, I'll maybe be moving too slowly on something and they'll kick me in the tush rightfully. Yeah. So, and so, right. So, but that's a concrete example, but I love in that. each of those yeah, major decisions, um, I'm a big believer in surrounding yourself with wise counsel. Um, you know, I don't have all the answers. I never will. And I need other people around me to, to speak into my life and to also, uh, reflect back to me what I'm missing. Yeah. Um, and, and to add to that, maybe, you know, right, make sure that it's the right counsel, right? Like, uh, yep. maybe, you know, not necessarily, you know, not people that are going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear, but also, you know, from the flip side of things, make sure that they've got the best intentions, right? Absolutely. And that was the, those are the key criteria that I was thinking about in asking these people. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that all, all answers for, um, there's four, the, the four people that I meet with on a quarterly basis. I know they love me. They care. Yeah. And my wife and my kids, they yeah. know us. Um, and they'll, they're, they're not afraid to speak truth. They're not afraid to, you know, I, I call it poking in the chest, right? They're not afraid to yeah. poke me in the chase occasionally yeah. and say, dude, 
what's wrong you gotta yeah. get, let's go That's and great. um and so I, I i yeah to your point yeah, absolutely. No, that's I think that's awesome. I, it's, you're the first person who's really talked about uh, having that personal board of advisors and and how powerful that can be. So I love it. What's um it, as we start to wrap it up here a little bit, if there's one or two things you could give to the listener that's kind of like life principles or um guide points, right? That they can use to if they were to implement today it would help move their life forward today. What what would you say? Um. The first is, and this is uh, really out of the uh, my my first book, and it's um, choose to live a flourishing life. And the way that I describe that is live at the intersection or the collision of what are you passionate about? What are you good at doing? What are you skilled at doing? Gifted at doing? What? Um, how do you contribute value? And what is your calling? And 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 figure those out and make the decision sooner than later to live at the intersection of those. Um, and, and because that will really help you define your why. And when you live out of your why, you live out of your purpose, man, it's just a different life. Yeah. Um, and so that, that probably be the first one. The second one is um, just what we're talking about, you know, surround yourself with really wise people that will yeah. speak truth into your life. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Love it. What's, um, what's the best way? Is there kind of a main platform that we can all go to and find out more about what you're up to and, and uh, how you're helping, you know, the different leadership teams and, and companies out there, as well as your books and whatever else you got. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, website is www.uniquelynormal altogether, uniquely normal. Like that. Yeah. Dot com. And uh, you, can, or you can email me directly, Matt, M-A-T-T, at uniquelynormal.com. And uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn as well. It's under Matthew Lesser. But uh, uh, yeah, I'd love to connect with anyone that'd love to connect. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really, I love this stuff. I'm passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that comes across that absolutely 100%. And uh, I do appreciate you for the time. We'll, we'll make sure that if you're listening, you're driving or whatever, um, we'll get that linked up so that you can get to it easily, uh, through the show notes. And, and, uh, you know, if you, if you've enjoyed this conversation and you're listening and you, and you want more incredible content and conversation from, from other leaders, just like Matt, then stay right here. Don't go anywhere, but Matt, thank you so much for today. Uh, it was a great, thank you. great time. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate it.